From UFOs to psychic powers and government conspiracies, history is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. Welcome back to the show. Thanks so much for tuning in. As always, we've got Matt behind the camera. Noel's working on the podcast. Scully is creepy, but over there. I'm Ben, you're you. This is stuff they don't want you to know. And as we record this, our country, the U.S., is in the midst of something called the primary elections, or over here simply called the primaries. We can think of the primary election as sort of a rehearsal, at least for the American public, of the general election for the president of the U.S. And sad as it may be to admit it, um, many voters in this country only vote when it's time to elect the president. So not in the primaries, just in the general election. And as far as the state or local officials, forget about it. And for outside observers, this can seem like such a political spectacle, bread and circuses, a show for the masses distracting from the issues. And even here in the states, quite a few people don't really know what's going on with the primaries. So here are five things you should know about primary elections. Number one, not all primaries are created equally. In all 50 states, there can be differing rules about the structure of voting in a primary. For instance, there could be an open primary wherein any registered voter, regardless of their political genre, can vote for whomever they wish. Then there would be the opposite, a closed primary, wherein, for instance, only registered Democrats can vote for Democratic candidates, or only registered Republicans can vote for Republican candidates. And there are more rules, more structures, more Byzantine complications, uh, state by state, to every primary. Number two, the parties running these primaries, uh, for instance, the Democratic National Committee or the Republican National Committee, are not government agencies. They're private entities involved in U.S. politics. Why is this important? Great question. It means that they can change the rules of the game as they wish, when they wish. Now, this is not to say that there are a bunch of people in a shadowy back room planning to prank America, exactly. This is instead to say that a lot of the rules that you will hear discussed in the media are actually traditions, or they're things that are decided for that time. They're not legally binding. Number three, delegates. Okay, so you've heard about delegates perhaps, right? Uh, let's say you're listening to the radio or you're listening to a podcast and someone says, uh, Donald Trump has this many delegates. Bernie Sanders has this many delegates. Hillary Clinton has this many delegates. What that means is that, again, based on the state-by-state -state rules, the ratio of votes will result in not the voters actually going and registering for a candidate, but their representatives, who are called delegates, going to the national convention for a party to cast their vote, in theory based on the rules of the party in that state and the wishes of the voters. But hey, you might lean in and ask, what about superdelegates? Interesting question, uh, disturbing answer. Superdelegates were created in 1982, and they vote their conscience. If there were a pack of cards that were all delegates, superdelegates are the jokers, the wild cards. They can pledge to a delegate and then switch sides. They can, uh, they can ignore the popular vote. This becomes an enormously controversial point because critics of the system say that this is a failsafe that allows an establishment, right, like the party establishment, to prevent a grassroots activist from assuming power or becoming the actual candidate. Number four, the parties themselves have different rules. The independent parties, the Republicans, the Democrats, they handle their conventions differently. When you hear about superdelegates, that's a Democratic thing. That's a DNC thing. There are superdelegates in the Republican committee, but they don't count for as much. They don't wield near as much power. So to recap, what we have happening are two large private entities as well as some smaller independent entities with differing rules going to every state in the country 
which also has different rules and using these varying overlays of different rules to find one person out of, you know, anywhere from five to three, or, you know, it narrows down like a reality show. Think about it. And from there, these entities make, uh, make the next president or the, the person who gets on the short list for the next president. It sounds strange, right, when, when you think of it that way, but that leads us to number five, the primary system we're discussing in the U.S. Uh, while far from perfect, while possibly prone to corruption, if you listen to its critics, it's close to a necessary evil. This country needs something like that. The primary system was created in the progressive era to take away the power of the oligarchical elites who were deciding candidates. So before these primaries existed, if for instance, uh, you and I travel back in time and we're like voting tourists or something, we wouldn't be able to choose between candidates even if we really believed in them. What would happen instead would be that these parties, again, these shadowy smoke-filled rooms, would each pick a name. And they might cooperate on which names they pick. And then you have those two choices. It's an example we used before, but you know, it's like uh, two separate looking things moving for the same hand. So it was built to stop this corruption, yet now critics believe it has become an instrument uh, serving the same corrupt interest it was built to destroy or to weaken. And of course, for uh, the vast majority of the American public, this is a dry, boring thing, you know, and, and it's, uh, it's advertised and reported as though it is some sort of spectator sport, right? Although we can participate in this, people can vote. And this got us thinking. So in our podcast this week, Matt, Noel, and I are looking at a primary system in the U.S. From its structure to its history to allegations of corruption. If you'd like to learn more, please check out our audio podcast, which you can find on stufftheydontwantyoutoknow.com. We have a question for you. What do you think about the voting system in your country? Good? Bad? Corrupt? Are you allowed to vote? What would people from another country find weird about the voting system where you live? Let us know in the comments. And if you have an idea for an upcoming topic or episode we could cover, we'd love to hear your suggestion. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter. We're Conspiracy Stuff at both of those. And you can always email us directly. Until we get arrested, we are conspiracy at howstuffworks.com.